السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته my dear students uh, we are going to see today modern linguistics European structuralism introduction to modern linguistics lesson one so modern linguistics normally began to develop in the 18th century with works almost entirely centering around Indo-European studies and leading to a highly elaborate and consistent co reconstruction of the Proto-Indo-European language. The first half of the 20th century was marked by the Structuralist School, based on the work of Ferdinand de Saussure in Europe, and Edward Sapir and Leonard Bloomfield in the United States. The 1960s saw the rise of um, many new fields in linguistics, such as Noam Chomsky, uh, with generative grammar, William Lap uh, Lapov in sociolinguistics, uh, Holiday in systemic functional linguistics, uh, and also psycholinguistics in other disciplines. So, modern linguistics normally uh, it starts with the historical linguistics. It starts with what? With historical linguistics, the study of. Uh, sorry. So, modern linguistics normally. Uh, began with historical linguistics, the study of languages and uh, what is called a comparative uh, historical approach. Okay, so they studied the languages uh, in terms of their developments, uh, of course, uh, on the light of uh, um, anthropology uh, contributions. So they studied the human uh, the language as part of the human developments. Okay. So they saw the language developments and they've tried to compare between the languages in order to see the original or the origins of the languages and the mother language of all the languages. So uh, these studies last from the 18th century till the 20th century. So from the 18th century till the 20th century, normally uh, it is uh, it was noticed by the historical uh, comparative uh, linguistics so you have to compare between languages or languages origins of course by the first half of the 20th century it was uh, we cannot say it was the end of historical linguistics uh, it was a new contribution a new trend a new era in the linguistics uh, uh, studies uh, normally it was first of all <laughs> started with uh, uh, the works of Ferdinand de Saussure and what is later on called structuralism in linguistics. Uh, it starts in Europe and normally <laughs> after a uh, structuralist uh, view or approach uh, to language study set by Ferdinand de Saussure, uh, normally came uh, a new trends, uh, of course, based on the lights of the structuralist uh, uh, school of Europe. Uh, we have here Edward Sapir, Leola and Bloomfield in the United States uh, and in other, uh, of course, um, places in Europe, uh, of course, following the tr new trend of the study of the language in terms of what is called the structural approach to the study of the language. Okay. We move now to the different, if you can say, approaches to uh, the language study or linguistics. Uh, of course, um, first of all, we start talking about historical linguistics. Historical linguistics, uh, during the 18th century, linguistics was based on linguistics and anthropology. This is exactly what I was talking about now. In his The Sanskrit Language, it was a book written by Sir William Jones. Uh, in 1786, he proposed that Sanskrit and Persian languages, they have resemblances, it means they have similarities, so they have words of the same origin, to classical Greek, Latin, Gothic and Celtic languages. He thought that there are similarities between the languages, uh, Sanskrit and Persian languages, with uh, classical Greek, Latin, Gothic and the Celtic languages. So from this idea, 
normally sprang the field of comparative linguistics and historical linguistics. So the comparative historical approach to the study of language uh, normally uh, was emerged or was established and was used at that time uh, during the 18th and the 19th century. So uh, European linguistics centered on the comparative history of the Indo-European languages. So this is normally the uh, what characterized the first uh, normally start of linguistics. Okay, okay, sorry for I just in order to highlight this main point. So European structuralist uh, linguistics. Uh, centered mainly on the comparative history of the Indo-European languages. This is a, a, an approach, an approach to language, of course, sorry, approach to language study. It is an approach okay so this approach normally is based on the comparative historical studies of uh, the languages structuralism structuralism in Europe there was a development of structural linguistics initiated by Ferdinand de Saussure he was the father of structuralism this is a Swiss professor of Indo-European and general linguistics. He was teaching historical linguistics in Geneva uh, University, whose lectures uh, were mainly on general linguistics. Normally, his students set the direction of European uh, linguistics analysis from the 1920s on by the publication of the book of Les Cours de Linguistique Générale. Okay. And this uh, book uh, was a collection of the different uh, lectures presented by the Professor uh, Ferdinand de Saussure. Okay, uh, and his approach, structural approach, uh, normally has been widely adopted in other fields under the broad term structuralism. Later on, there was the descriptive approach to language which was normally established on the light of uh, the contributions of structuralism uh, after uh, or during the World War II. We have here, uh, this is an approach, this is an approach, this is an approach, and this is an approach. And so why it was called structuralism? Because it, it is based on studying the structure of uh, uh, language. This is structuralism. Descriptive, it is to describe the structure of the language. Uh, during World War II, North American linguists li like um, uh, Bloomfield, uh, Austin, and other uh, students and colleagues, uh, they've tried to develop teaching materials for a variety of languages whose knowledge was needed for the war efforts. So they've tried to describe the structure of, lang of language in a way that it it is uh, um, it, w it would be understood uh, by the normally language learners. Uh, this work led to the increase in prominence of the field of linguistics. Of course, uh, this paved uh, the way to uh, the establishments of um, of uh, teaching languages as a field of study in linguistics which became a recognized discipline in most American universities only after the war. Generative linguistics, this is another approach to language study. It is a school of thought within linguistics that makes use of the concept of a generative grammar. And this term normally was uh, borrowed uh, from mathematics. Uh, it indicates a set of definitions rather than a system that creates something. It is mostly closely associated with the work of uh, Noam Chomsky. Okay, by Noam Chomsky. So, we move to... 
other uh, approaches to language study. We have functionalism. Functionalism, it is a, normally a school of thought. It is an approach to the study of language, which uh, focuses on the functions of the language rather than only the structure of the language. So functional theories of language propose that since language is fundamentally a tool, it is reasonable to assume that its structures are best analyzed and understood with reference to the functions they carry out. So it means that functional theories of grammar tend to pay attention to the way language is actually used, not just the formal relations between linguistic elements, not only uh, a noun, an adjective, a part of speech uh, uh, normally studied separately. Here we talk about, for example, the relationship between the pronoun and the or the noun with the verb, the verb with the, uh, the, the, the other noun which comes after. Here we talk about the function of the pronoun as subject or as an object, the functions of the verbs, the functions of the uh, of the nouns that can be objects, uh, transitive, intransitive. So here it focuses on the functions of the linguistic elements rather than their structure. Functional theories then describe language in terms of its function existing on all levels, such as phonological, semantic, syntactic, pragmatic. So phonological, here we talk about, for example, the function of, uh, um, of the syllable. The function of syllable is that it, uh, uh, for example, the vowel in the syllable helps us to design or to, uh, to uh, to know where to put the stress, for example, whether in first or second syllable, uh, for example, semantic functions. So, uh, for example, when I start with a verb, then moving to the subject, it means it is a question. So, so each has a function. Each element has a function. Cognitive linguistics it is another approach to the study of the language. So it studies language from another view, which is a psychology, cognition. The mental processes of language learning and acquisition. So in the 1970s and 1980s, a new school of thought known as cognitive linguistics emerged. And it was a reaction, it was a criticism to generativist theory led by Noam Chomsky. And this, uh, normally this uh, theory or this school uh, was led by Ronald Langacker, Langacker sorry, and George Lakoff. Linguistics, two of these two linguistic, linguists, sorry, were uh, working within the realm of cognitive linguistics proposed that language is an emergent property of basic general purpose cognitive process. So they thought that language, learning or acquisition, it is normally a cognitive process. So from a psychological view point. Okay, that's uh, all concerning the introduction to modern linguistics, which is just an introduction. So we are going to see in the next video, we are going to see uh, structuralism in uh, at Geneva School, starting with, of course, or talking about um, mainly uh, Ferdinand de Saussure. Okay. Thank you very much for watching this video. See you in the next video.